Are you afraid of heights? How about a sting by one of these? What if we told you that there are people out there who seek out this stuff? Would you ever try them? Well, you know the saying, never say never. This is Justin Schmidt. Yeah, my name is Justin Schmidt. He's an entomologist. And I'm an entomologist. I basically study stinging insects. He's been stung by a lot of insects. I've probably been stung at least a thousand times. He reviews insect stings the way a sommelier reviews wine. Pure, intense, brilliant pain, like walking over flaming charcoal with a three-inch nail embedded in your heel. Which insect was that? That's the bullet ant. This is his lab in Tucson. This is his harvester ant. This is his vinegaroon. This is his tarantula hawk. These are some more harvester ants in a park near his lab. He is the creator of the Schmidt Pain Scale. The Schmidt Pain Scale is basically a scale to rate the painfulness of stinging insects on a scale of one to four. A one would be a sweat bee. Two would be something like a yellow jacket wasp. The three would be something like a harvest ant. And a four would be a tarantula hawk. How bad is a four? Four is absolutely excruciatingly debilitating, incapacitating, just shuts you down. Just absolute sheer pain. There's just nothing you can really do about that. I don't think I'd want to be stung by a whole bunch of different fours. I, I don't think I could endure that for very long. Let's be clear, Justin Schmidt doesn't just go out and get stung on purpose. It's just that he's dedicated his life to studying, well... My passion is insects and stinging insects in particular. Yeah, I get stung, but that's, that's all just part of the passion, you know, that, that gives me data. You know, sting helps me in understanding what the insect's doing. And I get to be out in the sunshine and out in the rain, out in the environment, studying these magnificent, beautiful insects. It's just. Just such a joy. I can't imagine anything I'd rather do more. So what's the highest you've ever slept at? Almost a mile. When you don't have a fear of heights, it's not really scary. It's like being in the craziest treehouse that you can possibly imagine. That's Mark Sinnott. He's a professional rock climber, and he's talking about sleeping in a tent. They're called total ledges. That's hanging off the side of a mountain. He's been climbing for over 30 years, and his favorite walls to climb are really, really high. Alpine bait wall climbing is Here? the pursuit of scaling the biggest Here? cliffs on planet Earth. Oh, and here. They take a few days to summit, so he has to camp out along the way. So I want to know, what does it feel like to sleep in a portal ledge hanging off the side of a mountain? The one thing that's more or less ever present in the mountains is wind. It can be pretty violent. You can experience hurricane force winds. There's also this thing that we call the Bronco Ride. Wind comes in, hits a cliff, and it really has nowhere to go except for up. Eventually it hits you and your ledge, and it can lift the whole thing up you can be suspended and then of course the ledge like slams into the wall you're just thinking about surviving and that wasn't the worst of it the smell in the ledge is, is not is not nice you don't change your clothes you don't bathe it's wicked scummy but people love it they continue to climb and explore through all of this punishment because there's still that one question left. How does it feel? The way it makes you feel is like a tiny speck of dust. It's very empowering. It really is just like kind of the most spectacular spot that you can be on planet Earth.
Yeah, if you are a unicyclist, you see the world really, really different. If I go through a city and I see a bench, for me it's not a bench, it's something where I think, can I jump on it? So the world is an obstacle for me. I always think, is this too steep? Is it possible to jump on this rock? So it really changes my perspective on everything. My name is Lutz Eichholz. I'm a professional mountain unicyclist. That means I unicycle in the mountains. I started unicycling at the age of nine. First, I only unicycled on the street. And over the years, I got more and more extreme. And now I unicycle mostly in the mountains. I really like to go down big mountains. So I did a 5,600 meter mountain in Iron a couple of years ago. And I want to go on even higher mountains. I unicycled on five continents, so on many, many places in the world. The biggest challenge on a unicycle is to always stay in balance. Technically, the most important movement are my legs, because I always have to pedal, so my legs are always moving. Then my right arm I use to balance, so I move it up and down. My left arm maintains the brake. If I go down on hard terrain, I'm not thinking at all. I'm just in the moment. I'm 100% focused just on the sport, on the movement, because if I start to think, for sure I would fall down. I like to do stuff which is not done by so many people. And I think it's a bigger challenge. If you don't have people, you can copy and you have to invent a sport a little bit by yourself. It's really unique, it's really special. And I think that's a big part why I like it so much. Every waterway in the United States is supposed to be safe enough to swim in every single day. But of course, they're not. I'm getting in to these contaminated waterways. Someone's got to risk something. If people see that image, they start to ask themselves, why is that guy in there? That starts a discussion that can lead to a cleanup. My name's Christopher Swain, and I've swum over 3,000 miles in over 25 different contaminated waterways in North America. I want to advocate for these waterways, and I can energize cleanups. I learned to swim as a kid. I was the kid who didn't want to get out of the water. As I got older, and I think this is true for many of us, I started to become aware that waters are contaminated with everything from arsenic to zinc, everything from human waste to nuclear waste. We saw our waterways as dumpsters. We saw them as sewers. Legally speaking, since 1972 when the Federal Clean Water Act passed, all navigable U.S. waterways have to be safe for swimming and fishing and drinking if they're a freshwater creek. Dozens and dozens of those waterways were in and around New York City. Newtown Creek is the worst of those. It is contaminated with lots of things, heavy metals, toxic chemicals, raw sewage, and one of the largest ongoing oil spills in the history of the United States. So in some way, we stole this waterway from ourselves. What I'm saying is, let's turn that around. When I decide to take on a waterway, this is my puncture resistant dry suit. I take all these measures on all my swims to protect my body and to protect my health. I wear a cap, I wear goggles, I wear earplugs. I never put my head under. Even so, I've gotten sick lots of times. Rashes, skin infections, ear infections, respiratory infections. It's a hazard that goes with the territory. The reason nobody has swum the length of Newtown Creek in history is that at least in the last hundred years, it's been far too disgusting. No one in their right mind would go in there. It's like swimming through a dirty diaper 
that's been garnished with oil, gasoline, and trash. Every part of your skin wants to crawl, so why do I push on and do it? I'm doing this out of love. Like, I really do love the water. And I don't have a lot to work with. I'm not a wealthy person, I'm not a scientist. What I've got is my body and my life to offer. I'm gonna keep going back in my dry suit and my hazmat gear until these waterways are clean. And when they're clean, I'm gonna get into these clean waterways in my bathing suit and enjoy them with my fellow citizens.